just four seasons ago, that's right, just four years ago, the Oregon Ducks were playing for the national championship. But since that time, life in Oregon has not exactly been a Duck dynasty. As a matter of fact, since 2015, the Ducks have won just 20 games and have lost 18. And they have seen a couple of head coaching changes. Of course, uh, Mark Kelpert's fired two years ago. And the Willie Taggart experiment last season, well, it was just for one season. Florida State head coaching job opened up, and Taggart decided to take it. So now Mario Cristobal, the offensive coordinator last season, now gets promoted to become head coach of a Duck team that, you know, hope they can get back to the glory days of yesteryear. That's what they're hoping in Eugene. Last year's offense um, did fairly well. Averaged 36 points per game, and the big reason for that was the play of Justin Herbert, a uh, quarterback that was pretty accurate, 68% completion percentage, 15 touchdowns, and only five picks. Now, how important was Herbert? Let me put it this way. With him, the Ducks were 6-1. and one. Without him because of injury, they were 1-4. and four. And I think the most alarming thing was their point production average with him was 51 per game, and without him was 15. Now, granted, the games that he didn't play during that middle part of the season was the toughest part of the schedule, but still, uh, by looking at Herbert last year and with and without him, you can tell it was a major difference for the quack attack. And so while the quarterback position definitely looks solidified as long as Herbert can stay healthy, the ground game, yep, yeah, it's back to basics because you lose one of the best running backs that school ever had in Royce Freeman. Last year, over 1,400 yards in a very productive career, so you got to replace him and the number two guy. So your number three guy from last year has to be number one this year. We're talking about Tony Brooks James, who already has, by the way, a national championship in track. That's right. He is a speedster, a little over five yards per carry last year, but only touched the ball 93 times. You know that will change this year. He'll also be returning kicks. Now, the receivers, other than Charles Nelson, you pretty much got the main receivers back. It was an offense, though, that did not um, amass a lot of passing yardage. Remember last year, um, it was the running game that was the bulk of the offense, over 250 yards on the ground per game, which was second best in the Pac-12. But the receiving unit, well, they only averaged 189 yards of uh, receiving per game. That was third worst in the Pac-12. So Dylan Mitchell, four touchdowns from a year ago, over 500 yards receiving. You have him back and Johnny Johnson, 14.2 yards per catch. That's the highest amongst the returning receivers. And Brendan Schooler, the one-time defensive player, 13.7 yards per catch. You have him and Tabari Hines. You're getting him from Wake Forest. He was the Demon Deacons leading receiver a year ago with 53 catches. Jacob Breland, one of the favorite targets, by the way, of Herbert. He's back in the tight end spot. Had five TDs. Not bad. Offensive line returns almost everybody, but you do lose all Pac-12 offensive linemen in Tyrell Crosby. Calvin Throckmorton, though, is back at right guard, one of the better linemen in the Pac-12. And Jake Hansen, he's back at the center position. Looking at the defense for the Ducks, well, it was an improvement from what we saw in 2016, which was an absolute train wreck. I think a big reason why they made strides last season was because they hired Jim Levitt. That's right, the former um, head coach of South Florida, um, a guy that's been an assistant for a while. Well, defense last year did a decent job considering what they were in 2016, which was pathetic. Last year's defense was very good against the run. This was the biggest strength of the team, only giving up 129 yards on the ground per game, second best, by the way, in the league. Get two of the three back. Oregon will play that 3-4 alignment. You get back Jalen Jinx, six and a half sacks a year ago at the defensive end spot. Your tackle is also returning in Jordan Scott, who started last year as a freshman. Linebackers, Troy Dye, one of the best in the country, very active, over 100 tackles a year ago. You get him back in an inside linebacking spot. But the Ducks will also get back the two outside linebackers in Justin Hollins and in Lamar Winston. Secondary has to get a little bit better. Now, they did have interceptions a year ago with uh, Ugo Chua Amade. Amade, a senior now, had three picks a year ago at the safety and the corner position, Thomas Graham, with three picks as well. But turnover margin last year was just average for the Ducks, 62nd in the country out of 130 teams. So they definitely behoove themselves if they can definitely increase in this department because they did give up a lot of uh, yards last year through the air uh, with 240 yards allowed per game, fifth worst in the Pac-12. 
Looking at the kicking game, uh, a big omission, losing Aiden Schneider, a uh, very productive kicker. So now Adam Stack, who was the punter last year, he'll be doing double duty, punting and place kicking. Taking a look at the Oregon schedule for 2018, if you were to rate Oregon's non-conference schedule, in other words, those first three games on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being ridiculous, I put it at a 50. I mean, Bowling Green, Portland State, and San Jose State. I mean, come on. Good gosh, you can name your score in all three of those games. That doesn't really do anything to prepare you for Pac-12 play. But I will say at least one thing in Oregon's defense. They did have a contracted series scheduled with Texas A&M, which was supposed to have started this year. Well, A&M decided to back out. So you can't really put that one on the Ducks. The conference schedule, well, it's favorable. No USC on the schedule for another year, and you get Stanford and Washington, the two heavyweights of the North Division, both coming to Austin Stadium in Eugene, so that doesn't hurt. Second half of the schedule, a couple of tricky road games, though. Late October against Arizona and mid-November against a good Utah team. you got to play them at Salt Lake City. The Ducks went 7-6 and six last season. This season, expect more than seven victories. However, as Ric Flair once said, in order to be the man, you have to beat the man. And in this case, the men of the Pac-12 North are still Washington and Stanford, who outscored Oregon last season by a combined count of 87-10. to Getting those two teams at home this year helps, but it will take more than home field advantage to win one or both of those games. I have the Ducks picked third in the North. That's my look at Oregon. We'll see you next time.